why don't more college football analysts follow recruiting? Buddy, you just heard me drop my pen. I have no clue. I, I do not know. There is no good answer here because I know when you watch an NFL broadcast, every one of those guys in the booth is intimately familiar with what happened in the NFL draft. They're glued to it. Everyone's glued to it. Yet on signing day and subsequently leading up to signing day, there, I, there are some folks who pay attention to it hardcore now. So I'm, I'm not painting with a broad brush, but there are some folks who are going to be in booths calling college football action on national broadcast who could not for the life of themselves tell you the story of this guy's recruitment, that guy's recruitment. And it's not even about the individual recruitments. You need to know for a, a better subtext and a foundational element of your knowledge of the sport, you need to know the recruiting stories of universities. You need to know that Texas A&M's trajectory has pointed up and why it's pointed up and the fact that they've grabbed this location, the fact that they probably had a top 10 signing class based on Houston alone last year. Now you could go to the game, you could go meet with the staff on Thursday and you could go to the SID, that's the sports information director for those unfamiliar, and he could give you some talking points, but that's their talking points. You need to know, you need to know it like the back of your hand. You, you can you can have supplemental research. You don't need to know the top 10 rankings from 2019. You can look that up, but you need to have a good working knowledge of it. I don't know why. To me, it's a little bit of a dereliction of duty. If you don't, if you don't at least possess the ability to speak the language of recruiting, and for, I'll give you an example right here. Probably get in trouble for it. Those of you who think I just tow the company line, I work for CBS. You know, uh, we carry a broadcast every week, the SEC game of the week. CBS also owns 24-7 Sports. Boggles my mind why 24-7 Sports themes in recruiting are not woven throughout those CBS broadcasts. And this is my company. It just doesn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me before I got here. I remember when CBS bought 24-7, and I thought, man, 24-7 this is going to be all over that Game of the Week broadcast. So not only am I going to get Gary and Vern at the time, not only am I going to get the intro music, which essentially is the same music they play right before you enter heaven, sources tell me, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my favorite recruiting brand woven into my favorite broadcast. And it's kind of never materialized. I don't get it. Those are decisions that are made at a higher level than me. I don't get it. But it's a good question. I don't have a good answer for you. I do know you're doing yourself a disservice. If you call yourself ever wanting to put on a headset and deliver play-by-play, -play, I mean, people are listening to you. Hardcore college football fans are listening to you. Imagine how disrespectful it is to them, to your audience, if you're going on air with a lesser working knowledge of the product than they have. And they're not the ones talking. They're the ones listening to you. So there are some, there's some out there who do it really well. And then those are called professionals. And then there are others out there who view it as a one or two day a week job and still get paid for it. But that's not professionalism. That's not owning your craft. That's just, that's just doing something for a paycheck. It just happens to be a high profile thing that you're doing.